According to the great 17th century philosopher and scientist Blaise Pascal, Christianity needed to explain the human condition. And Christianity, he said, uniquely explained the human condition better than any other worldview. He said that human beings were, in a sense, deposed kings. That we had a great origin being made in the image and likeness of God, but that human beings were fallen because of the fact that sin has entered the world. And this question of what is humanity generally, or who are we as individual peoples, how do we explain ourselves? How do we explain our goodness, our aspirations for glory, really? And how do we explain our misery and our propensities towards evil? These questions are great and perennial questions. I can't really do justice to this argument in just a few moments, but Pascal is able to answer this question because he himself was a man of intellectual greatness, a tremendous mathematician, experimental scientist, theoretical scientist, philosopher, polemicist. But Pascal was a very sick man. He was chronically ill, and he died at a very young age. So he, in his own person, understood greatness and misery, and he understood from Christianity the explanation for human beings as deposed royalty. Now, I've used this argument, this apologetic approach, for about 30 years in my books, articles. I've approached this at an academic level, at conferences. I've preached this as sermons. I've presented this in popular form. And I'd like to give you just the outline of his argument. It's quite profound because it appeals to Christianity. The Christian worldview is the best explanation for the human condition. And everyone can relate to this and is interested in this if they are at all interested in who they are and what the human condition really is. So you might speak of a human test for a worldview. A worldview is a set of assumptions or presuppositions about the basic makeup of the world. And any worldview worth its salt has to explain the status and the place of human beings adequately. And Pascal summarized this in a very noteworthy way in one of the fragments from the Ponces. What sort of a freak then is man? How novel, how monstrous, how chaotic, how paradoxical, how prodigious. Judge of all things, feeble earthworm. Repository of truth, sink of doubt and error. The glory and refuse of the universe. So you see this sense of greatness and misery in that description. Now, how do we account for that in the human condition? This strange, bizarre, paradoxical state that we find ourselves in. Pascal says that any philosophy, religion, worldview <coughs> worth our attention needs to explain these divergent values or qualities of the human person and the human condition broadly. He said this, man's greatness and wretchedness are so evident that the true religion must necessarily teach us that there is in man some great principle of greatness and some great principle of wretchedness. So we need an explanation that is true, not merely interesting or comforting, but true to reality, factual. We need an explanation that is rational, not one that we adopt for any other reason than it explains the facts at hand. Pascal was a deeply rational, intellectual person, and he offered this explanation to his readers. And we also need an explanation that is not only true and rational, but pertinent to life, that is, significant to who we are and what we might become. So just to reflect very briefly on human greatness, think of how different we are from the rest of the living world. Our powers of rationality in mathematics and philosophy, our ability to capture moral truths and to try to aspire to moral ideals. Think of human creativity in painting, in sculpture, in poetry, and so on. Or think of human relationality, our ability to love and receive love, to be heroically self-sacrificial. But then think of the other side of it. Think of what Pascal called human misery, uh, 
man's inhumanity to man, as it is sometimes put, our ability to be so cruel to one another, even those we love the most, or even our pettiness, our petulance with one another, human greed, our insatiable desire for more and more, even at the expense of the good of others, or think of using our gifts of rationality, morality, creativity, and relationality for selfish and evil ends, the great personalities that end up becoming tyrants. Now Pascal said there were two mistakes in accounting for the human condition. And he thought that only Christianity avoided both mistakes. The first mistake is to view us as being great but not taking seriously our dark and miserable side. Now today this is probably best exemplified by what's called the new spirituality or the new age kind of thinking. And that is that we have limitless potential. The only thing that keeps us down is negative thinking. And there's no deep flaw in the human condition. And on this view, there really is no ultimate problem with the human condition that cannot be solved by humans themselves. So we look within to find greatness. And when we find misery or cruelty or selfishness, we just attribute that to negative thinking and something that can be overcome by greater self-esteem, more therapy, or watching Oprah more often. <laughs> now the other mistake is misery without greatness. That human beings are not special in the universe. We're not unique. In fact, this is the worldview of naturalism or philosophical materialism. If you want to explain the human condition, explain us on the basis of our animal ancestors. So you can explain everything about us by virtue of instinct and conditioning and nothing more. So this is really a debunking view. Anything that seems to be great and to stand out as transcendent in the world that distinguishes us from the rest of life really has to be explained in, according to what came before us, our animal antecedents, and the entire universe, according to naturalism, has to be explained on the basis of chance and necessity. No design, no purpose. We are not made in the image and likeness of God. We are rather the products of impersonal evolution. Now, the biblical answer is able to conserve our uniqueness with respect to both our greatness and our misery. The explanation for our greatness with respect to rationality, morality, creativity, relationality, and so on, is that we did not evolve from the slime, neither are we somehow divine beings in our own right, but we are made, as Genesis 1 says, in the image and likeness of God. So we are distinct and unique. We are not God, but we are not mud either. We are relational, rational, moral, creative beings who have been put here to know God, to know ourselves, to know the universe, and to cultivate the world for the glory of God. Therefore, we have abilities and propensities not shared by the rest of the animal world. Now, how do you explain our cruelty, our pettiness, our greed, using these human gifts for selfish ends? There, scripture says that human beings have turned against God and turned away from God and turned inward. As Augustine said, the human soul tends to turn in on itself instead of relating outward to God and outward to others. And we have the biblical account in Genesis 3 that our first parents disobeyed God, rebelled against God, turned against him, and looked to themselves as their final reference point and their final integration point by believing the lie of the serpent. So Pascal claims that this understanding, greatness by virtue of the image of God, and misery by virtue of the fall explains who we are without anything being left out ultimately. But he says that this answer is not the product of human philosophizing. It makes sense. It explains who we are. It explains who we are better than any other worldview. It's true. It's rational. It's a significant worldview. But it's not based ultimately in autonomous human reasoning. It's based on the revelation of God given in Scripture and given through the person and work of Jesus Christ. So Pascal says this in the Ponces. Know then, proud man, what a paradox you are to yourself. Be humble, impotent reason. Be silent, feeble nature. 
Learn that man infinitely transcends man. Hear from your master your true condition, which is unknown to you. Listen to God. And Pascal believes that if we listen to God, we will receive a true, rational, revelational, significant answer to who we are, and also the answer to the human condition found through the nature and work of Jesus Christ.